to get that front. Yeah. These two things with a 1500 grit sand scratch, if you use them properly, will get you an absolute mirror finish. I think it's time we do another wet sanding video. I've covered this one time with the lightning before, um, but got a few questions that have come up. I'll go ahead and show you guys. So I don't know if, if anybody saw this post, but this was the post that I made on Instagram and just got a few questions. Austin Green here wants to know if I'll do a video on wet sanding. Corruption 702 said it looks like a mirror. And Tyler 1327 says uh, wet with 1000 first. So now I just posted this, so I don't have a lot of comments yet on it, but I realized that this would be a perfect time to go ahead and do a wet sanding video. Now look, I've got a lot of B-roll, if you will, uh, of me sanding and Andrew sanding and polishing. So what I'm gonna do right now is just take you through the steps of how I would start out. So I guess we'll just, we'll just do this spot right here since the car is already here, okay? And this is gonna apply to pretty much anything else. You wanna be careful down here on these areas because you can uh, start to burn through if you get up on these corners. Your corners do not hold paint very well. Uh, that's just a fact. And the sharper the corner, the less paint is on the edge of that thing. So, But I'll take you through real quick and show you how I get started. As you can see, there's still some orange peel in here because I wasn't gonna take it that far. But for this video, what I'll do is come in and get probably the majority of this orange peel out right here for you. Now, before we go any further with this video, everybody likes a different product. So I'm not gonna try to sell you on a product. What I will do though, is show you the products that I've used and I've had really good luck with. Okay, you can see the orange peel there, there, there. Um, and orange peel is just texture, okay? So depending on what setup you have, there's so much that goes into this. So all I'm gonna do is show you what I'm using and I'll make a couple of other recommendations for you. This is 1500 grit wet sandpaper, wet dry, and it's just on a little uh, foam block, okay, a Dura block. All I do is take a little sprayer like this, spray the sandpaper, and I come in with a kind of a short stroked cross hatch pattern. Now, what you can do, and I like to do a lot of times, is turn this thing up on end a little bit and it'll cut better. Get a couple passes like this and a few passes like that. Now this is some pretty rough orange peel here. What you wanna do is keep the sanding block moving, right? If you stay right here too long, you're gonna have a low spot. That's not gonna matter on this small of a piece, but on a door, you'll be able to look down it and see a wave. So you wanna work what you have to work and then blend it out, okay? I'm telling you, that is the secret to life, is blending. I'm telling you, I think blending fixes everything. You just massage it out so that, you know, the rough edges aren't seen. And that's what you're trying to do here. So let's see where we're at with that. So all you wanna do then is come in with some type of towel, wipe this off and let it dry. You're not gonna notice the orange peel until it dries. That got the majority of that orange peel out. So there again, this is gonna be more like an overview, okay? So I'm gonna stop there with this. But 1500 is a little coarse, but it will polish out. I could show you guys that, but I just recommend that you come back in with some 2000 right behind it. So let me go ahead and do that now. All right, and I'm just using the 3M stuff, 2000 grit, wet, dry paper. Wet the paper. You need to soak your paper. All right, and then what you're gonna do now is just come in and try to remove some of those 1500 grit scratches just to make your polishing life a little bit easier for you. So you're not necessarily trying to cut anymore. You should have all of your orange peel out by this stage, but right now you're just really just trying to get the 1500 grit sand scratches out. It doesn't take much guys. Uh, I will say this, when you're buffing, it's not the same thing as sanding to paint a car. When you're buffing, you have to be careful with long strokes because they will scratch the car to the point to where you can't get it out with the buffer. So keep uh, all of your strokes very short. I've never had a problem doing that. That's been the story of my life, so. <laughs> all right, uh, we'll let that dry up real quick and I'll show you what I'm using to buff it. If you guys wanna see a video, check right up here at the top and you'll see a video where I went into more detail with the lightning and on the Retro Fox. There's a bad spot right there, but guys, I'm not gonna worry about that on the ground effects. So uh, you have to pick your battles here, decide what you wanna do. Okay, and what we're gonna be using right here is 
the Rupus, Rupes, Rupes, whatever you want to say, ever how you want to pronounce it, Bigfoot 21. And what this means is it's got 21 millimeters of throw. This thing right here moves 21 millimeters. You see that? That's huge. Uh, this thing cuts really good, but they are stupid expensive. I mean, this is like a $400, $500 machine. Listen to me, you do not have to have this. You can go to Harbor Freight and get a random orbital. You can use a high-speed buffer, a rotary buffer that just spins. I don't recommend you guys use that unless you already know what you're doing. If you already know what you're doing, you're not watching this video to learn anything anyway. So start out with a random orbital and you'll be good, okay? And it does cut quick. This is a wool pad from Roops right here, okay? It's a medium cut wool pad. I actually really like this thing and it cuts quick. So this is 3D. The company is 3D that makes this and it's ACA 500. This is a pretty heavy cut compound, but watch how quickly this cuts and watch the finish that we get off of this, a wool pad and a medium cut compound, okay? Just put you a few dabs on here. I always try to do about four like that. Put it on the panel, smear it around real quick and go to town. Now, on that, you saw that I was just all over the place, right? Uh, going fast, I was going slow. Uh, there's, like, they tell you to go, I think it's like two inches per second or something like that is what they recommend. Guys, you can go quicker with it. It's just going to take a little bit longer. I turn the speed up on mine. Uh, actually, I usually run it about six, believe it or not. And uh, just get after it, guys. Look, you're not going to swirl your paint with this. You can't swirl your paint with that. I mean, like, I don't know how you would. But look at that that quick and that was real time by the way we have our shine back and better than ever on this panel now for most of you that would be perfectly fine looks pretty much like a mirror but if that was black you would actually see little micro uh swirls in it now i just told you you couldn't swirl anything uh not with a fine cut this is more of a medium to rough cut so it will leave a haze okay so now all we're gonna do is come in with another pad and finish this thing up. Okay, next up, I'm gonna use the Ultra Fine. Guys, I have used the yellow pad uh, from Roops. I've used uh, Lake Country pads. I've used stuff you get on Amazon. Just get yourself a good pad. They even sell some decent ones at Harbor Freight. But this is a really fine pad with Roops Uno Protect, okay? There again, don't get so caught up in the products that I'm using. Um, you do need to find what works for you. This may not work for you, so I'd hate to tell you that this is the be-all end-all. My dad doesn't like the same combination that I like. So, there's that. Make sure you keep your pad spinning so keep enough compound on it to where it's lubricated enough to where your pad will continue to rotate if it's not then either turn up the speed or add some more compound or either you're pushing too hard one of the two you need to keep it spinning because it'll cut better you don't have to but it will definitely take a lot longer so here you go guys just that simple just that quick we've got ourselves a nice shiny ground effect down here so check this out. There's a ton of different options that you can use. I don't want to confuse you. I just want to tell you that there's a lot of combinations out there that work. 
this is what I recommend if you're just starting out. Uh, this is what I can recommend to you because it's an easy combination and I know it works. It's not super cheap, but regardless of the buffer you have, if you go to Harbor Freight and buy their random orbital buffer, right? Here's what you can do. Roops sells different pads, right? I recommend this. This is the combination I would recommend to you guys every time if you're just starting out and it works great. I could get the exact same results uh, with these two pads as what I have now, but for whatever reason, this pad won't stick anymore. The Velcro part on the back is bad, so I just chose to go a different route and it works great. Blue pad, blue compound. That's gonna be your first move. That's gonna cut 1500 grit sand scratches and finish to almost a mirror finish with 1500 grit. Obviously, if you go 2000 or 3000, it's gonna work even better, okay? This is what I recommend. This is step one. Step two is your yellow pad and your yellow compound. That's it, guys. That will get you everything you need done. I don't care what anybody tells you down in the comment sections of this video right now. You hear me out, you listen to me. These two things with a 1500 grit sand scratch, if you use them properly, will get you an absolute mirror finish. I promise you. I don't care what anybody else says in the comments. I've used it for years. I love it and I know it works. So there you go. Here's the key to it all. You wanna take your blue pad and work all of your sand scratches out. You cannot have any sand scratches left before you move to this pad or any combination. Your first run needs to get all of your sand scratches out and then from there you can polish out the scratches or the haze, if you will, that this left. This is not gonna get scratches out. If you didn't use this long enough, and you try to use this to get the sand scratches out, no, nah, it's not gonna give you a good job. And I think that's why a lot of people think you have to have these you know, five different steps and all this stuff. No, it doesn't work that way. Sonax makes some really good stuff. Meguiar's makes good stuff. Uh, you can go to your local auto parts store and if you play around, you can probably get some compounds there that work. Some buffers are gonna cut better. And the reason is because the millimeter throw that they have. That's a 21 millimeter, one of the biggest throws you can get. It's gonna cut quicker. Um, I don't know what the one from Harbor Freight is, maybe like nine or 10 millimeters. I don't know, you could probably look it up and see. But there's all sorts of other ones out there, okay? You don't have to go spend the big money to get that. I just wanted something that would last me a lifetime and I got it and I absolutely love it. Plus it's got a 30 foot cord on it. <laughs> look, I even had Aubrey, I think she was 15 at the time or 14, uh, wet sand and buff the, the back of the lightning and it turned out great, so telling you guys it's easy a rotary not so much you gotta know what you're doing there all right guys i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up and as always thanks for watching